Hello, everyone. I am usually not the sort of person to bow to public pressure, but I have received a lot of requests to do the, uh, the initial Sierra Adventures. I've mentioned in the past that they've been, in my opinion, quite overdone, but, uh, but still, several people have said that they would be curious to see how I approach the, uh, the very early Sierra Adventures. So I figured, well, why not? Let's go ahead and start with the game that got it all started, the original AGI pseudo 3D adventure game, King's Quest 1. Or I think as it was, I think it was just King's Quest at the time. King's Quest, Quest for the Crown, but it wasn't called King's Quest 1 because I don't think they had plans for a sequel when it was initially released. Um, the one thing, one thing that I'm going to be doing differently is I'll be playing the Apple IIGS version of the game, partly because that's the one that I grew up on, that's the first version of the game that I played, and so it has personal nostalgia value for me, and also because uh, I think it's probably unfamiliar to most of you folks. Most of you probably played the game on the IBM PC, so this will be a new experience for you folks and something familiar for me. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start the game by typing in PR number 5. I doubt that anybody really cares, but um, in case anybody ever wonders what this means, PR number is uh, the, uh, to, uh, the Apple II DOS command to um, redirect output to a particular slot. And in this case, by slots, I mean the actual physical expansion slots in the, uh, in the motherboard on the computer so that, you know, you had physical slots that you could plug cards into, and they were numbered 1 through, I think, 7? Or was it 0 through... I think the first one was probably 0, so it was probably 0 through 7. Um, and if the particular slot that you're redirecting to had a disk drive controller in it, then the system would try to boot from that drive. So um, on Apple IIs, typically disk drives were in slots... Uh, or disk drive controllers were in slots 5 and 6 inside the machine, and so this is basically trying to boot from the uh, first drive controller in which I have loaded images of the two discs for King's Quest. So doing this will load the game. The opening music is quite a bit different from the uh, the green sleeves theme, which uh, is familiar from the IBM PC version of the game. Um, other than that, the intro is fairly similar, uh, just completely different music. And so here we are. We start off the game in uh, in a nice little place like this, and we can walk around using the keyboard. Uh, one very special thing, which the Apple IIGS version allows you to do is walk around with the mouse. I remember when I first played the game, um, I was, I think I was playing with my mother. Yeah, I was playing with my mother, and we figured out how to move him around. We figured out how to move the character around with the mouse. But, uh, for some reason we intuitively thought that if you clicked in a direction like this, he should just keep walking in that direction. It didn't occur to us, for whatever reason, that he actually walks to where the mouse cursor is. So if I click here, he only walks to where the cursor is and stops. And my mother was always kind of uh, perplexed. Why does he run out of steam? Why does he only go that far and then suddenly get tired? You have to keep urging him along with the mouse cursor. Why doesn't he just keep going in that direction? Whereas if you press a keyboard key like that, he'll just keep going forever until he does... until he walks into an obstacle. Or, or dies, like that because we fell into the moat. Ah, uh, your struggles and cries have attracted hungry alligators. They do not want to let you go. Well, 
that was a very successful initial run. Uh, let's go ahead and restart the game. Uh, apparently it doesn't recognize restart. You have to type restart game. I think you can also, hold on, I think you can press shift 9. On the IBM PC it's F9, but they're, uh, on, I don't think there are F keys on the Apple II. I think you have to press shift 9. Yeah, there we go. Restart the game. Uh, another interesting thing, well, I don't know if it's interesting, but another thing that I did when I was a kid was I, uh, would walk up, hold on. I would walk up here, like this, and I really honestly thought that somehow by some strange architectural uh, curiosity that there was a staircase or something on the side of the castle, and I had climbed up onto the top of the castle and was walking on top of the castle. Uh, of course, this is not the case. What's actually happening is we're behind the castle, and so we, uh, you know, the castle is clipped in front of us, and that's why we see ourselves, we see our head poking above the castle parapets. Is parapets the right word? I don't even know what a parapet is. You know how sometimes uh, you kind of have some idea of what a word means, but you don't really know what it means? I really have no idea what that word means, even though I have some faint suspicion that it should be the word that I'm using in this instance. I also remember when my uncle, uh, when I was a kid, and my uncle was playing this game, and we had walked out of the room for a moment, and my uncle said, Oh, wow, there's a big gorilla that suddenly has appeared in this tree outside the castle. And, of course, I came to, I came running to see the gorilla that he had proclaimed was there, and it was a joke. There was actually no, as far as I know, there is unfortunately no gorilla that appears in this game. Um, and I've gone on and on in the past about the text parser and how important the text parser is to me. Um, I may have over, I have, I may have belabored the point a little bit, but uh, I do like the fact that you can type commands into this game uh, because it, to me, it allows for a lot more flexibility. So you can do things like look at the flowers and have the game inform you that they are absolutely gorgeous. Indeed, they are. I mean, look at them. In, look at them in their sixteen-color glory. It's it's wonderful. Are they are wonderful? Are they not? I don't know. This is where it all started. I, I remember I was blown away when I first saw this scene. I think I was how old was I when I first played this? I was probably about six or seven years old when I first played this and had the experience of just being able to not only walk around in full full movement, but also be able to type things in and try to interact with the world through text. Uh, unfortunately, I came in a little bit late to play text adventures, so I never played Infocom adventures or Colossal Cave or things like that until much later in life. But this was my introduction. This is my first adventure game. This is my introduction to the world of adventure gaming. Anyway, uh, over here is obviously the entrance to the castle. Um, I don't know why we never picked up on this in my family because um, I, I grew up in a Finnish family and for some reason it never occurred to us until much later in my life that um, that this was actually the Finnish flag and unfortunately um, I apologize it looks like it's getting cut out a little bit um, the OBS software that I'm using seems to want to expect a particular uh, aspect ratio for the um, for the uh, video that it's recording, and I think uh, for whatever reason it's kind of thrown off by the Apple IIGS aspect ratio, and so I've tried to tweak it a little bit to try and get as much of the game window in as possible, but it looks like it's actually cutting off the right side of the... Uh, it's unfortunate, it's cutting off the right side of the game screen here, so you can't quite see it, but this little flag that's hanging here, you can see like just the left half of it, this is uh, basically the Finnish flag hanging here, or sort of a somewhat uh, chopped off version of it because it's kind of cut off at the bottom here. But anyway, I don't know, we never picked up on that, but there's been sort of this conspiracy theory that Daventry, which is where the game takes place, is actually in Finland because this is kind of the Finnish flag, but I don't think it's meant to be the Finnish flag. I think it's just a, uh, just a joke. Another peculiarity, this became legendary in my family. For some reason, um, we had the experience or we so sort of convinced ourselves that you couldn't type open door to open this door. You had to type open the door like that. But uh, I don't know where we got that idea. Somehow we seemed to um, to have had that experience when I was a kid. But uh, I've since gone back and tried it. And indeed, you can just do open door. And the door does, in fact, open. The huge door swing open slowly. I really like that sound effect, too. That sound effect of the doors uh, opening up. Um, there's really nothing useful to be done in this room. You might want to look at the, uh, the armor. 
uh, the armor from one of the King Edward's knights from years ago, but you can't do anything with it at all. You can't wear the armor. The game doesn't really... It's firmly mounted to the wall, and if you try to wear the armor, this is the game's generic response, meaning I don't understand what you typed in. Uh, it's a little bit misleading because it implies that you can do that later, but no, don't be fooled. You can't do it later. At, you, you can't do it at all. You can't wear that armor in this game. So let's go ahead and wander through here. Continuing the theme of misplaced country flags, I think this is, isn't this Sierra Leone or something like that? Uh, or some other, or is that Burkina Faso? Oh heck, I don't remember. There's there's some country that uses that flag coloring. Um, it's also kind of confusing. So let's take a look around. Oh, in this game you can't just type look, you have to say something like look room. Yeah, this huge tapestry room echoes every sound, except I don't hear any echoes because the... Uh, 2GS is not sophisticated enough to simulate echoes of footsteps. Um, so what we're supposed to do here is, I mean, you can just start talking to the king, but you're supposed to bow when you meet him. Um, if you t just type bow anywhere, it says uh, it would show more respect if you were closer and in front of King Edward. Um, I think there's a, uh, hold on, let's see. There's some kind of a... Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I uh, I also didn't understand this part. It's it's proper to stand directly in front of and a few paces back from King Edward when addressing his eminence. Um, I didn't really quite understand. I guess because I was a kid and my language skills weren't really properly developed, this seemed counterintuitive to me because I understood back as meaning, you know, backwards. So I thought, wait, how are you supposed to stand directly in front of him? and back from him. Does this mean I need to kind of be behind the throne a little bit, like back here? But then I can't be directly in front of him, so I do need to be here? But actually, no, what you're supposed to do is bow right around here, right around where this little staircase, where these two or three steps are. If you bow from here, you get a whopping three points. When you bow to King, Ed to King Edward, his pleased smile warms you. Now we can go ahead and talk to King, or just talk King, and here we are informed of the uh, the main gist, the main uh, goal of the game. And in fact, it's not required yet that you do this. You can actually win the game without coming in here and talking to the king. But it kind of makes sense since we're here to come in and talk to the king because this gives some uh, some context to what we're supposed to do with the game. So I'm going to go ahead and read this because why not? When you speak to King Ed to King Edward, he sighs and says, Sir Graham. I am an old man. I fear my end is near. I have chosen you to prove yourself worthy of the throne. As you know, our kingdom is weak and poor, like me. I have knowledge of the existence of three things that would make our kingdom wealthy and strong, and all of them are Viagra. No. Somewhere within our kingdom, there is a magic mirror that tells the future. There is a magic shield that will protect the bearer from mortal harm. Finally, there is a magic chest that is always filled with gold coins. Go, Sir Graham. Go and bring me back these treasures. If you succeed, you will inherit the throne. Um, I think as a kid also, um, I looked up mortal, and I sort of started to understand the difference between mortal and immortal. Like, mortal is something that can die, and immortal is something that can't die. But I didn't understand what's mortal harm and what's the difference between mortal harm and immortal harm. Uh, I don't think there is such a thing as immortal harm. I think mortal harm just means, um, like, lethal harm, something capable of causing mortis, death. But I didn't understand that at the time. And as a child, I thought, what, what, what is immortal harm? Like, what, what is something that... Da is, is that harm that comes to immortal things? How can you harm something that's immortal? I don't know. I also like the way the king waves at you, although it's kind of subtle, but if you if you look carefully, you can see that. I also spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to go down from here, because it's not apparent that there's a wall here. And so I spent uh, no small amount of frustration trying to figure out how do I go, go, you know, go in this direction, because there doesn't appear to be anything obstructing me, but there is, in fact, I guess, a wall. This is where the other wall of the throne room is, and you cannot go in that direction, unfortunately. That was also quite confusing to me. For some reason, I'd convinced myself 
that there was a dragon down there, and if you went there, you'd find a dragon to slay and become a hero, but no, that was not the case. Can I say bye to the king? No. The king does not understand bye. I also don't think I really understood what these uh, sort of structures are. I mean, it's now obvious to me that uh, that's a light, that yellow and white thing that I'm kind of behind is a... Um, it's a light hanging from the ceiling, but I thought it was something against the wall at first, and I couldn't understand what's what's going on with the game's perspective here. Why can I, like, walk behind this thing that's against the wall, and what is it? Um, and, of course, there's another one down here, but that also kind of threw me off, because as a kid I didn't really understand this game's 3D perspective. Okay, so we're on a quest to get uh, to get three things. We want the magic chest, the magic mirror, and the um, and the magic shield. Uh, I also, all my life, and even now, uh, I have always seen a face in this tree. This sort of thing in the middle is its nose. It has a very broad sort of uh, sort of wrinkly or uh, bulbous nose, and then this is sort of a uh, sort of a smile, sort of a somewhat bemused smile, and then these are tightly shut eyes. The tree is smiling mirthfully and closing its eyes as if it's laughing about something very funny. Ho oh, ho, oh, it is a very funny tree. Um, so yeah, in this room, I think these little colored dots here in the lower right are supposed to be flowers. And I think I did figure out all by myself that you can move this rock. Um, and the first time I tried to move it, I was standing here. So let me go and save the game. Um, I'm going to be saving um, on the actual discs that, uh, that the game shipped on. And so that's going to mean that I have limited amount of space because the whole disc size, these are 800 kilobyte discs. Um, I may need to overwrite some of my saves, so instead of using descriptive save names, I'll just uh, I'll just use generic names because I can probably just save on top of them as I go. So I'll go ahead and save those. And so yeah, I did figure out that you can push the rock, uh, but yeah, the first time I tried it, I was in fact in this position and promptly killed myself. We are very sorry that you did not succeed. Indeed, I didn't. Well, I succeeded in moving the rock, but anyway. All right, so yeah, so of course what you have to do is you have to be up here, and you have to move the rock from up here. And, oh, I didn't read what that said, but there's a, uh, it said something that there's a hole underneath. And then if you look in the hole, you find an intricately carved dagger. I didn't even know what a, a dagger was as a child. I, I, I didn't, I had to, I think I had to ask my grandmother what's a dagger. And she was a Finnish speaker, and so she didn't know either because her English wasn't that great. Um, actually, I still don't know. What is the difference between a dagger and a knife? I mean, I knew what a knife was, but what's what's the difference between a dagger and a knife? I assume there must be some... I assume there's some kind of um, technical difference in how they're shaped or, or the function that they're used for or something like that, but... Um, I mean, how often do you use the word dagger in your everyday life, even now? Probably not very often. Oh, this is where the wolf comes in. I think this was one of the first ways that I died in this game, because the wolf is usually a natural... This screen with the wolf is usually a natural point to pass through into later parts of the game. Oh, and the wolf even makes a barking sound, which I don't think you get on the PC version of the game. That was kind of cool. So... In this game, you can press the equals sign on the keyboard to swim, which is useful in many places because there is water that you will have to traverse. Uh, you cannot swim in most rivers because the river current is too strong to swim in. Uh, oh yeah, this screen. This screen uh, confuses a lot of people because... Um, there's nothing, yeah, it is only a rotted log. Um, you can't, um, well, I, I don't know if it confuses a lot of people, but where a lot of people end up missing points is if they've played this game before and they know what's in this stump, and so they just take it without looking inside. What you can do, or what you should do, is first look in the stump, and then you notice a small canvas pouch. 
Uh, if you already know that the pouch is there and you just get the pouch right away, then you'll, you'll still get those three points for taking the pouch, but you'll miss the one point for looking inside the stump. Um, so let's look at the pouch. Tattered pouch is made of a coarse canvas, and if you open the pouch, cautiously, you open the pouch and see sparkling, you see many sparkling and flashing diamonds. Quickly close again so as not to lose any. And now, if you look at our inventory, uh, yeah, inventory is tab just as it is on the PC. Um, I think you have to, hold on, how do we look at something? So the object is shift for. So, wait, what? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't appear to be working. Okay, anyway, you can type look at pouch. Yeah, the diamonds in the pouch glisten beautifully in the light. Um, ah, here we go. Here is a river. Um, I always thought that these, um, uh, I know it's a little bit ridiculous now, but I always thought that these were two swans swimming in the river, which of course they're not, they're just the, the white colorization given to the water by the, the rapids by flowing over the rocks, but for some reason I always swore that those were two swans in the water, and I'll go ahead and save my game here, and it should ask me, yeah, do you want to replace, so I'll just say yes. Uh, if you go into the water here and try to swim here, oh, I actually can swim here. Okay, I can swim in this part, but if I go towards the, uh, the flowing, uh, the rapids, yes, the swift water pulls you down to your untimely demise, and the swift current does not allow for swimming. So if you get there, if you get to the, um, to the, uh, to the kind of uh, swift flowing part of the river, you will die. I think also the same thing happens here. If you, if you get into this area down here, you'll die, but you can swim in this more placid portion of the lake without, uh, without trouble, as long as you press the equals sign in time to start swimming. Uh, is there's, oh, I think this is where the fairy godmother shows up, but I don't want to... Ah, here we go. So this is a goat. Um... And Sir Graham is a very dignified knight of the kingdom, and so he will not have any uh, illicit relations with that goat, but he will have something to do with that goat later on. Oh, the well. The well is... Uh, this is where you can get pretty um, pretty mixed up if you don't know what you're doing. There are several things. The easiest thing to do here is to just get into the bucket and ride down to the bottom of the well in the bucket, but um, a more sophisticated thing to do is to cut the rope, which we have a dagger for, and now we can take the bucket. Now we need to walk over here, since we can't ride down in the bucket anymore, we have to lower the rope, and now we can climb on the rope, and descend into the depths of the well. Now, you might initially think, well, what can I do here? There's nothing to do, it's just the bottom of a stupid well. But in fact, you can dive underwater and enjoy all the uh, stuff here. I love the blub blub sound. As well. I love the little random sound effects that they in in inserted into this version of the game that, uh, that weren't in the PC version. Let's walk out through this hole in the side of the well. That's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and save here, because it happens that there, uh, for those who didn't notice, there's actually a dragon in this room, and um, the dragon does have the ability to kill us. Uh, conveniently enough, the dragon does not come over to the right side of the screen, for whatever reason. There's sort of an invisible barrier that blocks him right here. So we're safe here, but we will need to deal with the dragon somehow. So let's go ahead and say hello to him, shake his hand. You should know about these fire-breathing dragons. Maybe next time you'll be a little more careful. Uh-oh. I like the way uh, he's transformed into just this charred 
heap of ashes with some embers. I actually like the artwork that they did with this death, uh, death picture. It's very nice. Uh, many gamers have also noted the similarity between this dragon and Trogdor, uh, and said that uh, this dragon reminds them of Trogdor. I believe it's probably... Uh, I don't know this for a certainty, but I believe that it's probably the inverse. Trogdor is probably inspired by this dragon, because I know that um, the folks who made um, Homestar Runner were inspired by this uh, by this game, because of course there was Peasant's Quest. Um, so here we are. Uh, we are in the dragon's lair. We're going to have to figure out some way to uh, get that mirror, because that... Uh, object lying he, uh, resting here against the cave wall is in fact the magic mirror that uh, the king told us we need to get. So we'll have to figure out how to do that, but I think I'll do that in the next video since uh, I'm at around 25 minutes and this seems like a good stopping point. Um, again, I apologize for the uh, the right side of the game window being cut off here. Um, I'll try to um, I'll try to reposition the the recording window a little bit to the right so that that doesn't happen in the next video. Um, other than that, I hope that you folks have enjoyed watching. I will uh, talk to you folks next time, and we will have more fun uh, with King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. All right, thanks for watching, folks, and bye-bye for now.